So, welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk, S-I-C-K-M-A-F-S.co.uk, where you can find lots of GCSE, Key Stage 3 and A-level maths videos. This one is about logarithms, which is for the C2 A-level maths module under Red Excel. So, what's a log? Well, it looks like this. Uh, it's read log base 28 equals 3, which means... 2 to the power 3 equals 8. See how it went from the base across and back. So 2 to the power 3 equals 8. Okay. So it's just another way of writing numbers to help you focus on the indices, basically. See how the indices are read, uh, written separately on the other side of the equals so you can work out those indices. So that's what logs are helpful for. A uh, few things are important to go over. So if you don't have a base written, automatically the default base is 10. Okay, so if you just see a log x, that means log base 10x. So if you don't see a small number in the corner, that's what it should be automatically. Now, if you want to combine logs, it's important to realize that the bases have to be the same. So one way of combining the logs is to add logs. And so if you're adding logs, uh, then you have to do the same base, and what you all have to do is times the two numbers at the end, so it becomes uh, a log with the same base as before, except for timesing those two numbers at the end. And the opposite, so if you want to take away two logs, uh, into and turn it, combine it into another log by taking them away, again it has to have the same base uh, in both situations, and you divide it instead, which makes sense, isn't it? If you add, you times the two numbers at the end. If you take away, you divide the two numbers at the end. Okay. Now, uh, this rule is very simple. You can, if you've got a power in on the number inside your log, then you can move that power to the front of the log, becomes n times log base ax. Or you could do the reverse and bring that number outside the log into the log and bring it up as a power. Very simple rule. Now, sometimes you have to change the base, just in case the two bases are not the same. As I said before, when you want to combine two logs, either by adding or taking away, you have to have the same base. So if you've got different bases, this you, rule is really useful because you can change the base that's different to a base like the other base. Okay, So if that was Z, turn that Z into a base A, for example. Now, how do you do the change of base rule? Very simple. Uh, you choose a new base, so call it N. Let's say I choose base 5. So that will be 5, and that will be 5. And this number just goes up, and the old base goes down. So you get a fraction with two logs of the same base. Now we're going to show you how they work. So you've got... Uh, a couple of examples of all the different types of questions. So hopefully by the end of this video, you should be able to do pretty much any logs question. So at least have the principles to do any of them in the C2A level maths module. So here we go. We're, uh, we've got a case where we've got lots of different bases. Okay, so we're going to obviously have to use the change of base rule. Okay, so if you've got log base 8x and plus log base 2x and blah, 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 you've got a couple of different bases to choose from. Uh, what base is our new base going to be? Well, top tip, don't use letters or avoid it if you can. It's not the end of the world if it is, but avoid it. And if you've got numbers to choose from, use the smallest number because that smallest number generally relates to the other numbers very well. But the bigger numbers don't relate to the smaller numbers as well. Okay, so that's it. just a very quick top tip top tips maybe. Uh, and let's just get on with the question. So, uh, how do you change the base for this? Basically, the old base is 8 over here, so that 8 is going to go in the bottom log, and that x, well, is the same as that x, that goes on the top, and your new base is going to be 2, because that's a smaller number, so that 2 is going to go there and there, so you can see that here, okay? This becomes log base 2x over log base 2, 8, but log base 2, 8 is equal to 3, so I crossed that out and put a 3 there. Okay, you'll see why I'm circled it in a second. Now that doesn't have to change because it's already base two. And uh, by the way, I could have changed the base to some other number that's none of these x two or eight, but it's better to change it to a number that's already ex existing, which means to do slightly less work. Anyway, because you don't have to change that one as well now because it's already two. Anyway, uh, again, you have to change base for this one. So that's the old base. The old base is that thing there that goes on the bottom, yeah? And two is the number that was there, so that goes on the top. Okay, so it becomes two logs, and again, we're choosing base, the new base is base two. 
so it's going to be 2 and 2 so you got log 2 2 over log 2 x again we can simplify log 2 2 as 1 because 2 to the power 1 equals 2. See how I pretend there's an equal sign as a number there? Well, because I'm reading it like this. 2 to the power 3 equals 8 sort of thing. So 2 to the power 1 equals 2. So if two, if that if that number is supposed to be a 1, that 1 is equal to the whole of this. That's what it says. Like this 3 is equal to the whole of this. So basically, this is 1. Okay, so what we have now is this, there's a, you know, log base 2x over 3, log base 2x again, equals 12 over log base 2x, that's the 1, doesn't really make any difference, is it, that one. Anyway, so just to make it look a bit easier, we're going to do a quick substitution and change all of these for a y, sub y equals log base 2x. Okay, so you end up with this, uh, so basically that's why I circled all of them, so you can see what I'm going to substitute for. And so if you times it all by 3y, just to get rid of these ugly fractions, etc., you get this, rearrange it into a quadratic, and uh, you basically get these two solutions, and then bring back the log 2x, because y is log base 2x. Uh, so log base 2x equals 3 and minus 3, which means 2 to the power 3 equals 8, so that means that has to be an 8. Okay, and 2 to the power minus 3 equals 1 8, so that's got to be, that is 1 8, so x equals 1 8. Let's move to our next example. We're going to take away two logs. Good thing the bases are the same, so we can apply the rule, but we're not completely ready yet, because if you look at these rules, this one, sorry, this one, the taking away logs rule, and this adding one, then neither of them have a number in the front of the logs, okay? So what we need to do is bring that in to the log. So that two is going to go up and become a power, like this rule says. There's a number in front, it can go up as a power and end up like that. Okay, so it becomes log base 3x squared. Okay, now you might say, well, hang on a minute. You say there isn't a number in front, so you can't use a rule. Well, what? A, but there's no powers up there either. Well, you could treat x squared as a single number, couldn't you? Okay, so that's like just, you know, just a single number. So, yeah, it's equivalent to this rule then. Anyway. So now we can take away the logs, which means this has to be divided by this, x squared over 2. Yeah, when you combine it, all you do is divide the numbers at the end, and it turns into one log with the same base. So that's the same base there, and we're dividing this by this gives you that. Okay, then obviously it's still equal to 1, because we're just reformatting this, rewriting it in a different way. So this is the same as that, so it's still equal to 1. Now, reading the log, you say that means 3 to the power 1 equals x squared over 2. 3 to the power 1 equals x squared over 2. You know 3 to the power 1 is just 3. So rearranging that gives you x equals root 6. So that's another example done of combining logs and how you need to combine logs. This example is quite different. Okay, you need to learn a few tricks. I can tell you immediately how this should change. This should become 5y squared plus... Uh, 2y minus 3, but you can't see that yet, probably. Uh, so I need to explain some of the principles uh, as to what are happening behind the scenes, and then you will be able to do the same, because these questions on this this sort of subtopic, or these kind of questions in logs, are so similar to each other that you can do it as fast as that, even though it looks like there's a lot of working on the side. Okay, so let me explain that really quickly. If you got y equals 5 to the x, and how do I use that substitution? Because normally it will stand out like this, yeah? It will be like, I don't know, it might be 3 to the x, and it might be 10 bracket 3 to the x. That's how easily it stands out, and you'll see it's all repeating throughout. So you can, hang on a minute, that's my substitution. Now, here are the principles. If, you, if y equals 5 to the x, then y squared equals 5 to the x all squared, which means, according to indice rules, you have to time them together gives you 5 to the 2x, okay, already becoming recognisable, and often they don't even have a plus 1 there, okay, so instead of 5y squared as my substitution, I would have had just y squared, and then if I timed it by a further 5, that's like doing this, 
Okay, remember y squared is 5 to the 2x, so it becomes 5 to the 1 times 5 to the 2x, which means 5 to the 2x plus 1, because you have to add the powers if you have the same base. Remember that word base? Yeah, it means this number, whatever. Well, you know what it means. Anyway, so basically what I'm trying to say is this becomes, as I said over here, this is 5y squared if y equals 5 to the x. Okay, that's 5y squared. If it didn't have a plus 1, it would just be y squared. Okay, so it becomes 5y squared plus 2y, that's a y, minus 3 equals 0. Solve that quadratic, you get these two solutions, which actually means 5 to the x is equal to those two solutions, because y is equal to 5 to the x. Now, uh, the thing is, there's a really quick way of doing this, but I don't really want you to just learn that really quick way. I'll tell you the really quick way. You can write log base 5, 3 fifths, so log base 5 over here, and then 3 fifths there, okay, equals x. You put that in your calculator, and you'll get the answer. Your calculator, hopefully, is like something like the Casio one that I like to talk about because that's very useful, very good way of laying things out on the calculator, on that calculator. So anyway, um, uh, but I have to teach you this other way because it's generally more useful when it comes to other types of questions, hard kind of questions. Okay, there's certain types that I think it's more beneficial for. So I'm going to teach you this very important method. It's called logging both sides. So if I put a log on this side and put a longer bit on this side they should stay equal so I'm doing the same thing to both sides notice I don't write a base okay I can write a base any base I feel like but mathematicians get lazy like that so uh, leaving out the uh, base means it's base 10 automatically doesn't really matter what it is okay now once I log both sides I can move the x forward according to this rule Okay, so I've got x times log 5 equals log 3 fifths. Move that log 5 to the bottom, and you get this, which is equal to minus 0 0.32. On the other hand, you've got 5 to the x equals minus 1, which is not possible, because if you do a power, you cannot get a negative answer. Therefore, you write not possible, and you get a mark for saying not possible. Okay. So let's go to the final rule really quickly. If you got log base two, three, you got you know the same base throughout, okay, then you can combine these two together using you know the adding rule so it becomes log base three x, you know, this rule here, it's times the n bits. Uh, this and this times together gives you 3x. What I'm going to try to show you here is the opposite of this logging both sides. It's unlocking both sides, okay? So get rid of the log 2, log 2 from both sides, get 3x equals 15, and therefore x equals 5. Obviously, the bases have to be the same because you want to do exactly the same thing to both sides. Okay, and we end the video there. Thank you for listening.